Hello and welcome back to The City Considers here at Davis Media Access. You can catch this show on DCTV Channel 15 on the Comcast system Tuesday nights at 6.15. It's always online and we'll promote it on social media too. We've got quite an archive going of city guests and city issues, so check it out. Uh, tonight, I'm really pleased to have City Council Member Will Arnold as my guest. Welcome, Will. Thank you. It's a pleasure and, to be here. Uh, it's been a while since we've had you on. Yeah, at least a year, and uh, uh, I love coming here, so thank yeah. you for having me, inviting me back. So we're going to be talking a bit about uh, economic development and sort of through your lens and what that means and right. what you're excited about. The last time you were in, uh, we were the city was at the point of moving through the process to, uh, to grant permits to cannabis dispensers. Series. Correct. And so we kind of focused on that. Let's do a quick update there and then we'll move on to some other stuff. Sure. So last uh, May, uh, we approved uh, five dispensaries uh, to come to town right. and three of which have already opened up shop and are operating and the city's receiving tax revenue from those businesses. And uh, to my knowledge, we haven't received any complaints about them. Of course, we also um, have a number of um, other anc ancillary um, cannabis businesses operating in town mm -hmm. as well, manufacturing type businesses as well as research and development businesses right. uh, in the cannabis sphere. And that is um, something that I was passionate about uh, as a candidate for city council. Uh, and I'm very proud that I was able to be a part of us moving forward in that regard. One of the reasons is because it is uh, a relatively small but important piece of our economic development portfolio. Sure. Uh, that's private companies uh, generating uh, tax revenue, uh, employment, and, uh, and those good things for our city. And so um, economic development as a general issue uh, has long been a passion of mine mm -hmm. and is one of the uh, reasons that I decided to run in 2016 was to aid our ongoing economic development efforts in the city and of course um, moving toward allowing this new type of business, cannabis business, sure. is part of that but there's a lot uh, more that the city is doing and has been doing recently and that we have on the horizon in that regard and I'm right. excited to uh, to talk about it with you here today. As right. you know, um, I'm a, um, a, a small business owner. Mm -hmm. I come from a family of, uh, of business owners. The first car dealership uh, in Sacramento was Arnold Motors. If you go down to Zocalo Restaurant, uh, uh, you'll s still see the name etched in the side of the building. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the reason we live in Davis is because my family uh, moved here in the 50s to open a business. Yeah. Um, but in our city, folks operating in the private sector are in the minority. Mm -hmm. uh, most people who live in town um, and, and most folks uh, who work in town certainly uh, work in the public sector. Right. Uh, it's pretty easy to guess why. We have a major research university. Right. We live uh, 20 minutes from the state capitol. Yeah. You combine that with the sort of normal background, pub, uh, public employment, school district, city employees, things yeah. like that and you have a city that is predominantly uh, made up of public employees. Yeah. Uh, and that's a fantastic thing, and we wouldn't be Davis uh, without all of that. Um, but being tipped so far in, in one direction has some negatives. Mm -hmm. And um, so if the state cuts budgets, all of a sudden it hits a town like Davis a lot harder. Yeah. Our revenue is not uh, as diverse as some other cities in terms of tax base. Sure. And so the city, um, before I came on the council, but it has continued on, has really taken on economic development as an important um, as an important issue that we ought to address proactively. And I'm uh, very proud of the work that we've been able yeah. to accomplish. And you're, you're right about the, the, the perception and even the reality that I, I was at an event recently where someone described Davis as a one-shop town, meaning right. referencing the university. Right. And unfortunately, that does a disservice to the sure. mom-and-pop shops, the, the, the restaurants, the, the nonprofits, sure. the, all the other businesses who right. make up our community. So earlier you mentioned to me that um, you were feeling pretty good about some of the, the businesses that 
that Davis has been able to attract. So let's talk about that for a minute. Sure. Well, because of the university, in part, in large part, uh, we have an opportunity here where uh, certain types of businesses, um, not a business that I would ever be qualified to be a part of, mm -hmm. such as biological research, enzyme research, food right. and agricultural research, um, those types of private research and production and manufacturing entities see our little town as an incredibly attractive place mm -hmm. to open up shop. And, uh, and so we've seen... Um, some of that, uh, uh, Marone Bio mm -hmm. is, is a great um, local example, uh, but recently we've had a number of, uh, uh, of additional larger businesses that one might just recognize um, decide that, uh, that Davis is the place that they want to be. So right. last year uh, we had a ribbon cutting for, for Archer Daniels Midland ADM, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a biological research company. And um, they um, opened up a facility in South Davis off of Research Park Drive in mm -hmm. what is now known as the University Research Park, mm -hmm. uh, formerly known as Interland. And, uh, and we're hopeful that that's going to be a long-term relationship that, um, that has room to grow in the mm -hmm. city. Um, just recently, Mars, the candy company, yeah, I know. Uh, 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 just announced uh, that they will be moving to town, moving an important part of their research arm right, right downtown. In uh, the USDA. In the offices. USDA building right on the corner of, uh, of 5th and G. Right. Um, that's, you know, Mars. They make M&Ms mm -hmm. and, uh, and my favorite, Three Musketeers, Milky Way. Um, but... But what I've learned in this process is that there is uh, there's a lot of work to be done in terms of sustainably and humanely uh, producing the cocoa that we all enjoy on mm -hmm. on Halloween and mm -hmm. all year round, and uh, as well as they they make pedigree dog food and a lot of other things. Yeah. But um, but it's their I gather the cocoa research um, uh, a lot of it will be happening in Davis. And this is uh, exactly what I described, which is um, seeing the university and mm -hmm. the uh, incredible talent that comes from the university in terms of the research that's being done on campus, right. as well as students who graduate and then want to you know, work in the field in which they studied, yeah. uh, that Mars plans to provide opportunities to do so. And not just as a benefit to our community, but potentially as a benefit to, uh, to the world as we are able to uh, produce and harvest cocoa in a more uh, efficient, environmentally friendly, and humane way. Right. And I'm well aware, if you think about the Second Street Corridor where it parallels the railroad tracks, how much that street alone has changed in the last couple of years right. with the addition of some, some pretty large right. businesses, manufacturing, you know. Right. Uh, we attracted Mori Seiki. That's a, 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 a very large uh, company that makes um, parts for uh, robotics and other machinery right. uh, that uh, I recall that they were looking at essentially Chicago, Illinois, or Davis, California mm -hmm. as their Two, US, two vastly different, two vastly different places <laughs> right. to, uh, to set up shop. And yeah. they chose Davis, uh, again, uh, in no small part because of, uh, of the university. And so we have uh, a real opportunity here. And I think sometimes that gets lost in the discussion mm -hmm. when we talk about benefits to the community and potential changes that may, um, that may occur uh, in the community if we go down the economic development road in one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, but what gets missed sometimes is the opportunity that we have here in the community uh, to benefit our city, right. benefit the wider world, provide jobs for, for young folks who are graduating the, from the university, mm -hmm. uh, and to do so in our own backyard. Right. So the other one of the other pieces of this equation is if you have new businesses and you have people working here, you have to have places for them to live. Right. So let's talk a little bit about that the housing arm of economic development. Right. So I'm very proud of of my record on the council in terms of housing. Uh, when I was running for city council, mm -hmm. uh, we were asked uh, multiple times what we thought the biggest issue in town um, facing us was. And I, uh, my response was uh, this um, incredibly low 
vacancy rate of mm -hmm. rental housing. It, it, it stood, and I don't know that it's changed any at 0.2 percent, meaning that's that the last the, I heard as well for yeah. the you know 10,000 or so um, units that that exist. There may be 20 available right. at right. any time, and that causes a whole bunch of issues. Now, uh, one of the focuses uh, that the council has um, has moved toward is housing for students because mm -hmm. that's critically important. I mean, okay. the vast, vast majority yeah. of renters in town are students, right. and we've approved a number of student housing proposals. Um, but what that what those proposals um, miss mm -hmm. is housing for uh, other folks, mm -hmm. families. Or or um, or single individuals that want to live in town because they either work here, or work nearby, and that this is, uh, and they want to take advantage of all the things that make Davis sure. great, and so um, we recently approved just last week uh, a housing um, project on Childs Road. Um, it's uh, it's just west of all the car dealerships on, on Childs, mm -hmm, and it's a, mm -hmm. uh, a building that has ha, had long remained a mystery to me. I mean, when I was a kid, I think I thought it was a CIA black site or something. That the university used for That the university years? used yeah, for, the big lawn. for a number of years mm -hmm. with the big, big right. lawn and, the, and frontage. Um, and they had, um, this was uh, a piece of property that was zoned for commercial use, but highway commercial. We're not talking about research and development. Sure. We're talking more car dealership or auto repair or something like that, or offices like it was being used um, recently. Uh, and uh, after years of attempting to market it for those uses, uh, the owner realized that um, there was a real need here, and the city realized that there was a need here for workforce housing. Right. And so we just last week approved a project. Uh, I believe it's uh, 225 units of um, studio or micro one, two, and three bedrooms. The vast majority are, are one and two bedroom units. Um, which is um, is somewhat unique. There hasn't been a a, a, um, a rental housing project like that approved in Davis for many many years, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. we're very proud of that. Cool. Uh, there's also um, I mentioned earlier University Research Park, yes, formerly known as Interland, recently uh, acquired by Fulcrum Properties, and they've submitted an application to the city. Um, to take uh, a piece of their property that's currently undeveloped. Uh, it would be just north of the Holiday Inn. Mm -hmm. um, so it goes IHOP, Holiday Inn, mm -hmm. and then open undeveloped land. And they want to turn that land into um, uh, a mix of uses uh, with the first floor being office R&D, so yeah. commercial or light industrial. Uh, and then the um, the next number of floors being um, workforce housing. Yeah. These would be, if I uh, if I recall correctly, all studio one and two bedroom. Okay. With the intention being, again, this is going to be folks that can work at the very businesses and that not that are on commute. yeah on yeah. campus, so to speak, right there. Right. We have just a couple of minutes left. So before sure. we run out of time, because you mentioned Holiday Inn, um, I think hotels are increasingly uh, right. playing a piece of this puzzle too. Right. So uh, so it's not just research and development. It's not just those university spinoffs that we're proud of, but the uh, the council has, has approved over the last couple of years three hotels. Uh, and then there's also a major change happening to one of our uh, hotels right in the middle of town so we, we the hallmark, the hallmark yeah. inn so mm -hmm. so we'll start with that one the hallmark inn um is is changing brand and it's going to be a hilton now um and, and so those hallmark was an independent hotel very nice hotel mm -hmm. uh, but you what you get when you're part of one of these bigger chains is you get the loyalty customers yeah. that that are business travelers or university travelers and then we also have a Marriott Residence Inn mm -hmm. uh, that is, you can see it going up over there on, uh, on Mace and 2nd. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, the Hyatt House was approved, uh, and that is in South Davis near Davis Diamonds. Uh, that would be, there is a Hyatt on campus, but not one in town. That's a, one of those of the longer stay yeah. uh, types of hotels. And then um, the former, uh, I guess, current University Park Inn, 
um, there's uh, the council approved uh, a proposal there, and and that's in the works as well. So we do have there's this a lot is going more. On. There's a lot yeah. going on. Uh, I, I would be remiss if I also didn't mention just down the road from that uh, Marriott Residence Inn is the new uh, will be the new world headquarters for Nugget Market. Yes, I was going to bring uh, that up. That's an exciting uh, development that all of Nugget's corporate um, yeah. uh, employees will be housed in one place and it'll that place will be in Davis. Yeah, it's a big deal. A, it's a really big deal. And so, um, you know, I, I, I um, this is one of the main reasons why I ran for city council. Mm -hmm. As you know, I worked very closely with former councilwoman Rochelle Swanson. Mm -hmm. Uh, she, this was her major focus on the city council. Yes. Today's her birthday. Happy birthday, Rochelle. <laughs> and and so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to follow in her footsteps in terms of the, uh, the work to really keep Davis on the map and to embrace some of these opportunities Thank that we have that. as a community. Yeah. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, because I'm chair of the Arts Alliance, that the really cool thing about the hotels is that one of the, the taxes, one of the, the transient occupancy taxes, actually goes to support arts-related projects in, right. in Davis, which is very cool right. and, is, and is helping us accomplish good things. And I think all tied together, they, they start to make Davis even more of a kind of a destination place as well. No doubt. So, although I always want to tell people, don't come in August <laughs> <I know>. well, <laughs> when it's really hot. <laughs> I know, but what can you do? The folks, folks need to come here at that time to get their, you know, know, get their know. kids in the dorms and things like that. That. Well, Will, thanks so much for your time, for all pleasure. the work you do in our community, and we need to get you back in here sooner than, than a year for the, for the next round. So Come back and update us. Great. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thanks so much for tuning in here to Davis Community Television at Davis Media Access. This has been The City Considers, and I'm Autumn Labbe-Renault, and we'll see you next time.